Hello and welcome to another tutorial with Polka Art Studio. For today's project, we will create a simple junk journal perfect for beginners. It is a no-sew journal, quite easy to put together, and we will walk you through all the steps to make this for yourself. We'll provide all the measurements for this project, but we'll also show you how to customise and adjust them to suit your needs. Our approach for this journal allows for modifications, so you can easily adjust features like the spine width or the flap cover. For this project, you'll need craft cardstock, though you can use any cardstock you have on hand, like from cereal boxes. You'll also need double-sided tape and glue, some cord, elastic bands, or both, some metal eyelets and brads, and a scoring board, optional. Don't forget distress ink, craft tape and some cardstock in your favourite colour. We chose brown for our journal. The list with all the materials and supplies will be in a description box below. Of course, you are always more than welcome to improvise and choose materials that you want or have handy. The collection we used for this project is called Chocolate and Coffee, and it is a compilation of three separate kits that we have also bundled up for you. It includes journaling pages, decorative papers, and another kit dedicated to ephemera and extra embellishments such as pockets, tags, cards, and much more. We will include a link to these kits in the description box below. The journal pages were printed onto 110 GSM extra smooth paper and all the rest, such as the embellishments and the decorative papers on 180 GSM matte photo paper. Thank you. 
To create the cover, you will need three pieces of cardstock. We will first create the back cover. This panel will include enough length and weight to cover the journal pages with about a quarter of an inch bigger on all sides, half an inch for the spine, and about 2.3 inches for the connecting side that we will use to glue the next panel on. The measurements for this are displayed on the screen as well as in the description box. However, if you want to adjust them or simply don't want to measure, you can also find the correct size if you place a folded journal page onto the cardstock and mark the edges you want. Position the page to the left of the cardstock in order to leave enough space for the spine and the glue-on panel. Leave more space for the spine if you want to make a wider one. Instead of 0.5 inches, you could make it 1 inch or larger. All depends on how many pages you want to include and how many decorations you will use. Score the edges of the spine and fold both ways. Cut the top and bottom sides of the outer edge at an angle. This will help you glue all the panels together later on. We will now create the front cover. This will only be a simple rectangular panel that we will cut to the same size in order to match the back one. If you do not want to measure again, just line up the back panel against some cardstock and cut. This journal will feature a flap cover panel. It will overlap the front cover, but it will not cover it completely since it will only measure a bit less than half the width. The width of this panel can be adjusted to your liking. Use the back cover as a reference and mark the width you want, and then cut to the same 8.5 inches in length. Important to note is that this panel will also need to have enough space for the spine and connecting panel, just like the back cover. Mark all the score lines or use the measurements on the screen. We can now glue all the pieces together. Place the back cover in the middle and overlap the edge over the front cover. Do the same with the flap cover. 
We can now cover the whole cover with paper. We used a whole A3 manila envelope that we cut on one side and laid flat. Feel free to use any other paper you like, or even a craft paper roll. Just make sure it's about two inches larger on all sides so we can easily fold it over later. If you do not have one piece big enough to cover the whole journal cover, you can use two pieces. To glue the cover, we use double-sided tape on all the edges. For this project, we will not use liquid glue because there is a chance to wrinkle the pages. Instead, we will use ultra-stick glue. Turn the cover and glue it to the paper. Run over with a bone folder to make sure the paper is properly glued and all the air bubbles removed.
Fold the corners and glue them down. We will wrap the edges and glue them to the cover. Now it's time to decorate the front cover. 
You can choose a page you love or go with the one we picked out. Also, for a pop of contrast, we'll add some plain cardstock paper. We think brown will really make the decorative papers stand out. The brown cardstock paper will be with about a quarter of an inch smaller than the cover. We have also rounded the corners and distressed the edges with black ink. Glue the cardstock on the front cover and then place the decorative paper on top. Thank you. 
We will repeat the same process with the flap cover. We made the closure using a stud button. You can replace this with a regular button that you can either glue or sew on. To secure it in place we will use a metal brad. Poke a hole through the cover, align the button and insert the brad. Just like with the front cover, we will decorate the back cover. We will use the same colour cardstock underneath and some decorative paper on top.
We can now decorate the interior. Again, the paper used will be with about a quarter of an inch smaller than the cover. We use two pieces of paper. Both are about 20 centimeters wide or 7.8 inches. Let's mark the spine lines where the paper will fold, then score and fold along those lines. This step will make it easier to glue the paper and keep it securely in place without any shifting. Apply glue to the left side, then gently press along the spine to ensure the paper adheres in the right position. As you press down evenly, try folding the cover. This will help you to make sure the paper is glued on properly and will not lift when you open or close your journal. Repeat the same process with the right side. Our signature pages will be attached to the cover with some cord. 
For this, we poke four holes into the spine along the middle side. They should be evenly distributed with about two inches in between each of them. Decorate the spine with eyelets. Thank you. 
the signature we created uses 20 pages folded in half. We have already rounded the corners and inked the edges. To attach them evenly, you can use one page to mark the holes and hole punch it. Place it then on top of another bunch and repeat the same procedure. Make sure they all face the right side up. Do the same until all the pages are punched. Align the signature with the spine and connect it to the spine using some cord just like so. We thought that the ribbon on the interior would look nice while still maintaining a clean look on the outside. To finish this project, we will need to secure the closure in place. We will use some elastic cord that will wrap around the journal starting from the back, all the way around the button. 
To cover the edges of the cord in the back, we will later glue a pocket.
We're going to decorate our journal using all the ephemera and extra goodies from the kit. Feel free to get creative with how you use these different embellishments, but we'll also show you the easiest way to incorporate them.